You're now listening to the Fantasy Filler Podcast. Where we put you in the driver's seat every week, all year long. In the NASCAR racing world, from top news stories, latest results, and best fantasy lineups, we'll have you up to speed and out in front before the drop of the green flag. So let's dive in with our host, Vanilla Wafers. From the high stakes of Las Vegas Motor Speedway to the desert at Phoenix Raceway. The one-mile racetrack was the fourth race for the NASCAR x Series, and the United Rentals 200 had a lot of takeaways here for this weekend. We're going to talk about some of the drivers who impressed us the most, some drivers who let us down, and as well as the racing product altogether that we got here from the one-mile racetrack. That stuff plus more here on today's episode of... The Fantasy Filler Podcast. Yes, you heard that right. We are only going to be talking about the Xfinity Series race in today's episode, as I am going to be doing separate episodes for each racing division. I felt like doing that would be the best idea moving on forward, just for the simple fact that, honestly, I feel like most people want to just listen to the Cup Series, and that's perfectly fine. And also, there's some people who want to also hear about the Xfinity Series race. Well, I feel like when I've been putting them all together, there's always, every single time, I miss out on one important thing that I really wanted to talk about. And it just feels really rushed going through all the races. So this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. And if it works out really well, if you guys do enjoy it, we will be doing this moving on forward. These episodes, of course, will be a lot shorter than what we've seen in the past. But I think overall, people are going to enjoy that more. So we did not have a truck series race. So we're only going to have two episodes regarding about two races. Yes, there was also the Arca Menard series race. However, since it's not a NASCAR top division, I don't really cover on that Big congratulations, though, to the winner of that race. I do believe it was the number 41 of Tyler Reef. I think he's only like 15 years old, so definitely a fantastic story there. But we want to focus on the Xfinity Series race, and there are some big stories that came out of here. We had ourselves a first-time winner. We had a lot of people jockeying for positions there when it mattered the most, some contenders for the victory, and some drivers who just weren't there that we expected. We're going to be covering all of that, so without further ado, here are the final results for the United Rentals 200. Alright, so in this race weekend, there were 39 cars on the entry list. At first, there was originally 40. However, one of BJ McLeod's motorsports cars, more specifically the number 99 car, withdrew from the event. The driver who was going to be driving that car was Garrett Smithley. However, he went on over to the number 91 team of DGM Racing. So he was still able to race in the race, but now people are wondering what's going on with BJ McLeod Motorsports. Now they are down to only one car running full time. With there being 39 cars on the entry list, that meant only one was going to miss out. That driver being the number 66 of Timmy Hill. It's been a rough battle for NBM Motorsports here in the 2023 season. You've always see one team that struggles a lot. Last year, it was Mike Harmon racing, and they're still struggling this year. But now NBM Motorsports is really in a hole that they need to dig out of. Hopefully, they are able to make it into the Atlanta race because, man, what a rough start for them at not only Daytona, but the West Coast Swing. There was a lot of action-packed moments here in this race. 11 cautions for 69 laps and 14 lead changes amongst 8 different drivers. The driver in the end that was able to get the victory was the rookie in the number 18 car for Joe Gibbs Racing. Sammy Smith gets his first win and is the youngest driver ever to win at Phoenix Raceway. And it wasn't a fluke either. He had himself a spectacular performance all throughout the race, led 92 laps, finished third in stage one, fourth in stage two, just all around a spectacular run here for the number 18 car, as well as Joe Gibbs Racing as a whole. Not only were they able to get the victory here, but Ryan Trex, driver of the number 19, running a part-time schedule this year, was able to finish second. John Hunter Nemechek in the number 20 was able to finish sixth. So some good finishes for these guys, getting all their cars inside the top 10, and, I mean, getting a victory is one thing, but having all your drivers be competitive running for the victory at one point or another is definitely a pat on the back for Joe Gibbs and the whole organization itself. You have to feel good if you're part of the Joe Gibbs organization because 
First and foremost, they got a lot of young talent here in the last couple years. They were able to hold on to Christopher Bell, who's starting to become their top driver over there at Joe Gibbs Racing in the Cup Series. Now you got Ty Gibbs running in the Cup Series. He is a rookie right now. His finishes may not have been spectacular at the moment, but give him some time. Obviously, these Cup Series cars are nowhere comparable to the Xfinity Series car. It has made a huge impact. You've seen it with other rookies the past couple of years. So give him some time. I'm pretty sure eventually he will be running up front, competing for victories, and maybe even a championship in the Cup Series. Now you got Sammy Smith, this young, young driver who's already scoring victories similar to Ty Gibbs. He has big sponsors backing him up with Pilot Flying J, and more than likely, wherever Sammy Smith goes, that sponsorship will follow. And we know Joe Gibbs Racing kind of struggling with sponsorship. That's the reason why Kyle Busch left and M&M's decided not to start back up with them. But now you got Sammy Smith. If he does really good this year, maybe he stays here another year, he is probably going to be your replacement for Martin Trex Jr. or Denny Hamlin, whichever driver wants to retire first. And if he is able to run anywhere near what we see with Ty Gibbs down here in the Xfinity Series, that is some good signs to come for the Joe Gibbs Racing Camp. Not only that, you also have a young driver in John Hunter Nemechek, who has had a great start to the 2023 season. If Sammy Smith is not going to replace one of those drivers, more than likely John Hunter Nemechek is going to get another opportunity in the Cup Series And it could be with Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, if he keeps showing great results here in the number 20 car, I don't see why they wouldn't put him back up there to get him a second shot. His first time with Front Row Motorsports may have not been great, but do remember, he was really moved up real quickly. I mean, he wasn't even running full-time in the Xfinity Series. He went from truck to cup, just like that. And it really didn't work out. However, this is a different John Hunter Nemechek than we saw a few years ago. And you you just got to have a smile ear to ear if you're a Joe Gibbs Racing fan because... It's a rebuilding stage for them. Obviously, Denny Hamlin and Martin Trex Jr. are still going for victories, but overall, they're getting this new talent in, and if you have already people like Christopher Bell and Ty Gibbs getting victories, or at the very least figuring out the car running top 10s consistently, then you could put all your focus on Sammy Smith and John Hunter Nemechek figuring out the car, and you could have a four-car team just being absolutely dominant, something we haven't seen in quite a while, minus Henrik Motorsports. So, definitely some high hopes here. It's still early in the 2023 season, but to see Sammy Smith and John Hunter Nemechek run as well as they have here in these first four races, things are looking good for the Joe Gibbs Racing Camp. One thing that was a kind of a down in this race that's very, very funny to say was teammates really did not help each other out in this event. Like, there was multiple times in this race where you saw a teammate run into another teammate. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, Josh Berry... Josh Berry was somehow able to come back with a top 10, and I have no idea how he was able to do that. But he is able to finish 8th in this race. He got taken out by Sam Mayer... And I do believe at one point he made contact with the number seven car as well. It was just not a great race for Josh Berry, but somehow he was able to come back after being involved in two incidents and finish in the top 10. So Josh Berry just showing that he would not stop, but that was just one example of teammates running into each other. On the final lap, there was contact made between Chandler Smith and Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch running a part-time schedule with Colleg Racing, Chandler Smith being a rookie for the team, went into turns one and two and made heavy contact, which cost them good finishes in the race. I mean, they still both managed to finish in the top 10, but both of them were expecting a top five finish. Chandler Smith finishes fifth and Kyle Busch finishes ninth. I, I don't know what Kyle Busch was, what was going on there. I guess you cannot say that he wasn't just dogging it on the last lap. He was pushing it as hard as he could, but... You took out your teammate. You have two cars that were running so good now receive some pretty significant damage near the end of the race. I, I don't I don't know. That was that was very interesting to see teammates run into each other like that. And for them, basically, it wasn't even for the victory. It was for third place. So very unfortunate situation there for Colic Racing. But I don't think this was the worst act of a teammate ruining another teammate's race. That has to go to Brandon Jones taking out Justin Allgaier near the end after he got loose in turns three and four and absolutely junk the number seven car. Justin Allgaier played the pit strategies perfectly for him to get a win in stage one and stage two and lead 20 laps. There near the end on lap number 178, I think it was the last caution of the race. No, it was lap 180 is when this happened. You had 
the number seven of Justin Allgaier get moved up the racetrack with Brandon Jones, who got loose, and he wrecks, as well as the number 26 of Kaz Grala, and the number 25 of Brett Moffitt also gets caught up in the incident, and he DNFs and finishes 36. I think the only positive here is that Justin Allgaier was able to get two playoff points. Now, but the downer is they were definitely a top competitor in this race. And you don't want to have a wrecked race car. And especially to get taken out by your teammate. That is always just the worst feeling to have. So three incidents of teammates taking each other out. Two of them coming from Junior Motorsports and one from College Racing. Chevrolets were just not figuring out how to be teammates. Uh, let's go back to a more positive side and talk about just the redemption that most of these drivers were able to get in the middle of the race. The one thing I noticed in this race, and hopefully you guys saw it too, is if a driver got into trouble, unless their car was significantly damaged, they were able to bounce back. Sheldon Creed being one of them. Sheldon Creed finished third in this race. He was able to get stage points in both the uh, stage one and stage two. However, he spins out on lap number 150. And I do believe he went down one lap. Let, let me go back just to make sure and verify that. Maybe he did not. Maybe he was just at the tail end and he was just able to make his way back up. But with that being said, there were so many cars on the lead lap there at the end. I think there were still like 30 cars. And he was able to get up to back to the third position. So great bounce back for him. But he wasn't the only one. You also had Kyle Busch running up front even though he had to go to a backup car. So for him to move through the field, that was very impressive to see. Brett Moffitt being, caused it and being a part of two different cautions. He was still able to finish 13th after all that. Anthony Alfredo was the second to last caution in that number 78 machine. He bounces back and finishes 14th. So just a spectacular run for some of these drivers who ran to some problems in this race. I mean, you can't also include Josh Berry. Josh Berry, he finished eighth in this race. And it just showed that this track, hey, you could be down on your luck at one point. But if you're able to make the right calls and the right strategies or maybe just make the right adjustments, you'll be able to not only get back in it and have a faster car, but be able to move through the field. And that's something you want to see from your championship racetrack. So you got to give a shout out to those drivers who absolutely deserved it. One team who struggled the absolute most in this race was the 07 and 08 team. Both of their cars DNFing in this race. Greg Galding in particular wrecks out due to uh, tire getting cut down. I'm so thankful that he was okay because it knocked the air out of him. You saw in that incident on lap number 137, 138, right around there. He goes into the wall, and it takes him a while to get out of the car, and he just has to catch his breath. But very unfortunate, that's another race where they DNF in that 08 car. And then Blaine Perkins, uh, he is running for the Rookie of the Year. He has been running into some problems. And unfortunately, suffered suspension issues with just about eight laps to go. Took his opportunity out. I mean... I know this team made some big adjustments. They decided to replace Joe Graff Jr. with Blaine Perkins. And it looks like David Starr is no longer a part of this team uh, as their full-time driver in the 08 car. Now they brought in Greg Galding, uh, mostly due to the sponsorships. But it just kind of shows sponsorships don't mean anything if you have a driver who's just struggling to finish these races. And these two drivers, unfortunately, this is another weekend in a row that they absolutely fell apart. And uh, shame for them. I'm hoping that they get some better results at Atlanta. But not a good start for the 07 and 08 team. A driver who got another opportunity and was able to put on a good showing for this team was our motorsports number 02 of Kyle Weatherman. We got to give him some pointers here in this race for just having the equipment that he had and still able to run up top with the big dogs. Him and Brett Moffitt really do impress me. It's a shame that they don't get more opportunities like they do. This is absolutely huge for Brett Moffitt to be running full-time with uh, AM Motorsports and Kyle Weatherman getting an opportunity with our motorsports because Brett Moffitt was in the 0-2 car and I felt like last year and the year before and I felt like he put on some really good showings in that car, just was not able to get the victory. And Kyle Weatherman, we've seen him running with Jesse Iwuji Racing back last year in the number 34 car. That team's not even 
at the racetrack right now. I think they'll be coming back to Atlanta, but they have fallen off the deep end. But one driver who was keeping them afloat was Kyle Weatherman, and Dale Jr. talked um, highly about him in one of his podcast episodes. And there's a reason why. Just a great performance here and just shows that a driver like this needs an opportunity. I said it with Parker Kligerman in the truck series. Look what he's doing with the 48 car. Same thing needs to happen to Kyle Weatherman. Kyle Weatherman needs a full-time ride opportunity wherever it may be so he can show how good he could run these cars. Uh, he's only been in at best a slightly below average equipment. I don't think our motorsports is nearly at the same level that it was last year. They definitely have done a lot of setbacks for their team. However, still running really well with this car, having himself a good performance. Kyle Weatherman deserves a chance and I have to give a shout out for him on that. One driver that does have me concerned, however, let's look at the opposite end. A driver who deserves an opportunity um, compared to a driver who's kind of missing his opportunity has been the double zero of Cole Custer. And I really hate to bring him up because, yes, he was able to get the pole, but yeah, he gets the pole. He has a bad pit stop, never really recovers. He finishes 12th in this race. And that is something that just, you, you just scratch your head and you're just like, what is going on with these guys? I thought they were going to be front runners almost every single race. They were going to be um, chasing trophies. And that just hasn't been the case so far early in the season. That Maybe Stuart Haas Racing wasn't quite prepared to have a two-car team down here in the Xfinity Series. I mean, with Riley Herbst as the, in the 98 car, it, he was at best maybe a top 10 car throughout the entire season. So now you got the double zero car down here. But at the same time... When Cole Custer ran the 07 car, and I do believe it was Fontana last year, he was able to get the victory. So it's definitely been a rough start for Cole Custer. Still very early. He could definitely bounce back. Remember, this is the same driver who was able to win, I do believe it was eight races here in the Xfinity Series before he moved on up into the Cup Series. So there's definitely some talent there. It's just been a rough start. I, I just feel like people expected way more out of him early in the season, and I don't think he's even gotten a top 10 yet. So definitely some concerns for them. And let's wrap it up with just running down throughout the field and see if we have some high points or some low points for each driver. Sammy Smith obviously getting his first victory. Ryan Truex in the number 19 finishing second. He's making the most of his opportunities there in that number 19 car with another second place finish. I do believe he comes back for Atlanta next week. Third place, the number two is Sheldon Creed. Again, great bounce back for him. Riley Herbst, the number 98, consistently running in the top 10. And that's what you expect out of this number 98 car. Chandler Smith, he should have got a top three finish. It's been a spectacular run for this rookie as well. Great rookie of the year battle going on here in the Xfinity Series. You got Sammy Smith, who just got his win. And you got Chandler Smith, who's been oh so close to getting a win at not only here, but also Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Finishing out with a top five. He's got to be happy about that. John Hunter Nemechek in the number 20 machine finishes six. Uh, probably his weaker performance here out of the 2023 season. But if your weakest performance is a sixth place finish, that means you're having a really good season. Austin Hill finishes 7th. He's right at the same spot with John Hunter Nemechek. Just a spectacular start. Probably his weakest run. Josh Berry in the 8th comes back after multiple problems. Kyle Busch in the number 10. Uh, finishes ninth of this race. I think people expected him to be running for victories and winning almost every single race or being a top contender. Just hasn't been the case. He's been at best a uh, top 5, top 10 driver. And I don't know if that's really dogging on Kyle Busch or Colic Racing. But this is kind of their third car. And what I mean by that, it's it's not their strongest car. So Kyle Busch is doing a lot with what he has, and he was able to lead laps. He's pushing it to the very edge, and that's and that's the most they can honestly ask for out of Kyle Busch in this number 10 car. Still able to get ninth place finish. It should have been a top five finish. Daniel Hemrick in the number 11, he is able to finish 10th. Uh, he was strong at the beginning. It kind of fell off there near the end for him. So overall, good run for Colic Racing. It just didn't end the way that they wanted it to. Sam Mayer in the number one, he finishes 11th. Cole Custer in the double zero finishes 12th. Brett Moffitt with a bounce back in the 25 machine at 13th with Anthony Alfredo behind him in the 78 finishing 14th. Parker Kligerman, once again, a good run for him. He had a start near the back and was able to run around the top 15 throughout the race. He finishes 15th overall. Ryan Segan, the 39, finishes 16th. Kyle Weatherman, we talked about him. He finishes 17th. Parker Retzloff in the 31, I felt like he was going to do a lot better here in this race. It looked like he was going to be running around and finishing the top 15, maybe even the top 10. Just didn't work out for him. He finishes 18th overall. Ryan Ellis in the 43, finishes 19th. Rounding up the top 20 will be the number 51 of Jeremy Clements. He doesn't really have 
too many strong runs in the season. So for him to get a top 20 here and there is always something to look at for him. Then you got the number nine at Brandon Jones finishing 23rd. Yeah, not really the race he wanted by any means. He definitely has a lot of pressure on him going to a car that was the most dominant car of the season. Should have won the championship. Just came up just a little bit short to now you're taking out your teammates. Well, I guess the number nine car was notorious for taking out cars last year. But that that's a different situation. That was someone that got under his skin. This was your teammate. So definitely not a good run for him. He finishes 23rd overall in this race. Joe Graff Jr. comes into the number 38 car, finishes 31st. I think what happened to him was I, he probably was trying to run for a top 25. But then he had um, early in the race the number 45 machine of Leland Honeyman lost his rear end. Uh, his bumper and there was nowhere for that 38 car to go so it was resting there on the front straightaway he hits it and at that point it probably just messed up his car he was only able to finish 31st overall then you got Justin Allgaier with that situation where he got taken out there near the end he does get two playoff points so that's one positive thing but unfortunately he lost a race car in doing it and rounding out the field out by lap number 99 was the number 74 of Dawson Cram hey it's great that the 74 car was able to make it into this race, but unfortunately, it did not go their direction as they were not able to get past the halfway point. And that is your final results for the United Rentals 200. As far as the coverage went, it went all right. I wish Joey Logano would not keep talking when there's an incident going on. I felt like uh, Kevin Harvick was a good person to bring up there. He definitely shared what he liked and disliked. But, man, it drove me crazy when you would clearly see there's a wreck going on and they're just like, eh, forget about that. I'm going to finish what I was thinking before we put our attention to that. I think that was the only downer for the most part. They they were able to show the action and they didn't really miss any incidents that happened. Maybe Greg Galding, they were only able to use a standstill camera. But, overall, coverage was decent and the broadcasting was great. Just for Joey Logano, please, if there's an incident going on, immediately turn your attention to that. Don't finish what you're talking about. That will wrap up today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I I hope you guys like this. If you if not, let me know on my social media, whether it's Twitter, TikTok, or even YouTube. I I do read all your guys' comments. If you guys would like me to do separate videos out for the Truck Series, Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series moving on forward, I will be more than happy to do that because I want to really dive in on each driver and take and have the biggest takeaways be talked about because I, I feel like it gets crunched up in those episodes. But if you guys want me to keep it all at one, hey, that's totally fine. We will find ways to just grab the highest points from the smaller series and then just focus solely on the Cup Series. If you do want to follow me on social media, just look up Vanilla Wafers. I will pop up on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Twitter, I usually talk to you guys during race day. Just ask me questions there and I try to get back to you as soon as I can. TikTok, I post almost daily all NASCAR related, multiple series going on there. People seem to be really enjoying it. And YouTube, I try to post a big video once every two weeks. So far, I've been really good at doing that and you guys have been really enjoying the content. Next video should be coming out sometime next weekend. Hopefully, the earlier part of the weekend rather than the later part, but we shall see. And overall, a really fun race. I I really enjoyed it uh, as far as XFANDY fans go. If you... Sometimes get afraid of the Cup Series race not being too exciting. At least you can fall back on the Xfinity Series because they always bring an exciting race for the most part. So let's wrap it up there. I have been your host, Vanilla Wafers, and I have been able to lead you to the front of the field. So why don't we grab that checkered flag, do some burnouts, and head on out. So you all take care. This has been the Fantasy Filler Podcast.